Hello, welcome to Trigger Warning. Um, very special show tonight. Uh, we've got a guest in the studio. It's, of course, Emma Kenny. Emma, how are you? I'm all right, thanks. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming down. <laughs> now, we've spoken about getting you on a show for quite a while. Never managed to make it match no. up. But you're here tonight. I am. I'm in the camo. Ready for That's battle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're going to have to battle, I don't but think we're going to have a fight. It's, it's all right if we do. I've got. Gra- I've got back. I'm ready. I've got back. <laughs> I've, got, I've got Graham. He'll look after me. Um, for anyone that doesn't know, Emma is a, a psychologist, um, TV presenter, um, writer. Yeah. Contribute to radio, print, yeah. and all manner of other places. And you've hosted. Just wherever they'll have me, Hayden. Uh, well, yeah. So <laughs> let's not sell it like that. Let's sell it as some. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, you also hosted, uh, was it Britain's Darkest Taboos? Yeah, many seasons I did. On the Crime Investigation Channel. Mm. Is that is that still going? Or? Not taboos, but Crime Stories is still going. Meet, Marry, Murder is a new series. I'm still doing crime. Meet, Marry, Murder. Sounds like I'm still doing crime, but I mean, I'm still presenting crime. I really wish that was a reality show. Yeah, Meet, Marry, Murder. <laughs> yes, I would watch that. <laughs> That's one you should pitch. I, I, it's did... a little bit extreme, guys, but I've got this great idea. There's only half get out. <laughs> and not a lot of wages to pay. <laughs> just the winner takes well, it on. You can't pay for reality TV a lot of time. You just got to let him in. For oh these yeah, of kind course of you don't pay for reality TV. <laughs> no, yeah. but I mean just documentary ones. All oh, right, no, yeah. of course, no, no. Um, and also, perhaps most importantly, as well as running your own practice. Yeah, psychology. I still do therapy. Yes, you also do free groups. I people do. Online. I do lots of free work. Most of my work's for free in therapy. Bit yeah. of an obsession for me poor and marginalized deserve help and they don't really get it so Hang on, this this can't be right i grew up like you working class and mm. i know how hard it is so i when i got to a point where i don't have a big life hayden like i've got very small desires mm. as long as i've got a roof over my head and my car moves i'm pretty happy so as soon as i got to that stage i thought i'll just do what i can brilliant well very lucky. people might be wondering why on trigger warning I brought someone on that's just lovely to everybody <laughs> and you know he's a psychologist and uh, who is on television this morning oh i love my di- this morning my- do you know what after we finish yeah. the dirty secrets oh right okay we've got dirty secrets there must be just make some up okay that'll be fine make some up but i know people that watch the show regularly might be wondering like this doesn't sound like trigger warning you know why is it so lovely well let me just give you a bit more of what people say about about emma on uh, twitter my, my printer shat the bed um for this one, i'm gonna put the readers on i'm, I'm looking forward old. to this no there's, there's nothing too just terrible just go for it but the first one this is somebody that apparently follows you around quite a bit i found a lot of comments from this person um this leads into the next one could also do with banning this morning from showcasing these covid idiots day in day out i.e yes not no say i.e Yes, Denise Welsh, Carol McGiffin, Richard Meadley, Emma Kenny, Davina McCall, Kirsty Alsop, Julia Hartley, Loon. Brewer. He's talking about Mama Julia, Graham. We call By the way, I follow woman. all of them. Yeah, of course you do. <laughs> we call her Mama Julia. I like we her. like Mama Julia. Like and of course, Giles Brandreth. I don't follow Giles, but I should. I like his jumpers. Well, that's, that's something. Um, but you see, it goes on. Yeah, let's do it. Because um, a guy called Peter Dukes. Oh, he yeah, he hates me. Oh, he doesn't like you. Not he as much as this me. other person, but he doesn't like you. Are we going to get to Jay? Is Jay going to be on that? No, no we, right. we stop really saying, I'm really struggling to find something more reprehensible and dangerous than media figures, celebrities, and PR accounts spreading information. I would offer Peter a list of things considerably more I'm dangerous than that. Of a th- I mean, even like a basic blunt knife would be considerably more dangerous. Oh, this is the thing. It breaks his heart. Does it break his heart? It breaks his heart. The oh. unnecessary deaths. Murderer. I know. And it fills him with cold, hard anger. Does it? Cold, hard anger. He's one of the few men that I wouldn't mind taking to a white collar boxing match. Yeah, he's so angry that he tweeted about it. Oh, I imagine. Um, now, someone's responded because it, it's time to double down here. Um, agree 100%. 100, obviously. 100. Don't do 200. Could have been 112. Always pisses me off that. It would have been nice if it just gone that bit. Yeah, further. just a little bit more effort. Uh, I'm revolted by it, but of course. fascinated at the same time about their motives. Oh, yeah. So we will come on to your motives. I'll never forget the despicable way they caused deaths. Past tense. So you've already done it. 
Well, I mean, I'm on crime shows for a You've reason. You've murdered people. Absolutely, it's my and expertise. Again, it's, it's the same list again of people. But here's the thing. Um, what you've done what is the piece de resistance oh I, well mostly i'm fascinated that you've already killed people i can't help it because your great crime as far as i can tell is your questioning lockdown yeah that's it yeah that's that's it you're not telling people don't do this don't do i that. disagree fundamentally with lockdown now hmm. i do when it was the first lockdown didn't I, disagree with that yeah it, it was a very different feeling wasn't mm. it even when it went on forever yeah, it felt like um, a long time. Y you thought it was something. But um, I know that one of the things you've focused on is mental health. Yeah, massively. Being a psychologist. And we've been told that there's not that much negative impact on mental health. Do you want to tell me why I'm wrong in saying that? I mean, it's one of those really insane things at the moment for me because what's happened is a study has been done on 9 million people. Basically, 9 million people in the population were looked at for three months after lockdown, well, during lockdown and three months prior to lockdown. And then they've said, well, there doesn't seem to be a substantial rise, just over 7%, which is in line with potentially the way that we expect to see, sadly, suicide going up every year. And then people are like, there you go. No issues with mental health. And it's just absolute bollocks. And we know it's bollocks because, number one, anecdotally, we have lots of people, even myself, dealing with far more issues around mental health and suicide. But suicidality is not the representation of somebody struggling with mental health. It's the extreme and the final. And the reality is that hopefully <coughs> most people, if we do our jobs right, don't get to a point where they want to end their life. Mm. So it's the fact that Nadine Doris, who is meant to be mental health minister, gleefully put this out. And this is one study. We won't know about suicide and the impacts on children and the elderly and it all in between suicide wise for at least 12 to 18 months, maybe two years because of the coroner's courts. And even if it comes out, and I doubt it will, that there hasn't been a growth in suicide. I think that what we will see is a reality of an exponential explosion regarding mental health. And then there's another part of that, which is why do people think that studies identify mental health issues? You know, if you're going to look for it, of course, you can say, well, we interviewed this many people, but most people don't talk about it. Most people are just desperately sad and don't admit it. And I hate how we've academized everything. We've made everything about bloody studies. For example, now, an opinion, sorry, Twitter, Facebook, Insta, you cannot have an opinion unless you've peer reviewed it. Mm. Sorry. You can't be intelligent and questioning and inquisitive and curious. You can't be, I want a PhD, I want a medical qualification, I want 15 years in virology. That is such a middle class authoritarian perspective there's something i'd like to tell you about just, that just to say reality wise right i tell you what if you're a poor kid and you've had no advantages don't you dare tell me you're not bright mm. just because some kid who went to oxford got a degree and the dad paid for it and i don't disrespect people who do that i'm saying know your privilege well would you say that the guys from sage are middle class guys Edu oh my god highly educated yeah, absolutely would you say that they're responsible for us locking down the, co the country yeah do you know they got their data from wikipedia and i believe wikipedia and i believe that the guy who is one of the people in charge of that didn't even have any science degree or something yeah. like that there are no coronavirus experts no on, on on the board of sage that's why we have that independent sage now trying to come yeah. through um but even they're still saying we should lock down but my entire point is not only did we listen to neil ferguson who i'd like to talk about in a little I know. fucking wikipedia i know they googled us into a lockdown i know and what we've got now is a situation where i'm watching your feed obviously because yeah. we follow each other loads of shit don't i tons of abuse <laughs> people trying to people trying to cancel the shit out i don't of you. care no of course not <laughs> but this is based on them believing the science i know and which is being delivered by a government who under any other circumstances you wouldn't trust to get laid in a brothel no boris johnson is boris a serial liar badly, though, has yeah, he? he's got laid we, quite a lot i don't know if that's got anything to do with his massive wealth i'm sure that helps him measurably if boris johnson were from Beswick, he would definitely still be a virgin um we would never normally listen to these people. No. And now you're being fervently attacked mm. for bringing out things like the Danish 
Oh, that's thing about mask ridiculous. wearing. Ridiculous. We've got some things on here, and the way society is moving and mm. grassing your neighbours. I find it really difficult that I grew up in a working class environment, and I know that when I dedicated my life for a long time to kind of working with young people who are really disadvantaged, I bloody love kids who come from pretty challenging backgrounds because they often have got this incredible potential and no one's ever listened to them and I always used to work really differently with young people so I'm kind of really dedicated and committed to people who don't necessarily have the best experience and then of course that makes me biased because when I see middle class people making decisions about communities they've never even spent any time with they're fundamentally going to get it wrong. Mm. And on top of that, when I look at the way that you've just identified that stuff that's coming out in the BBC programme about where they found data from, you know, my sister's ex-headmistress, it changed on Wikipedia, so it was a crackhead. Anybody could edit it. Yeah. It doesn't take a lot of knowledge. You can just do this kind of stuff. But also, I think that fundamentally and systematically what I've seen is the UK has fell into this abyss. And this abyss is that nowadays, unless you have one narrative and you follow that, you are dangerous. And when it comes down to what I was saying before about the making the society that we live in either academic or, shall we say, you aren't allowed an opinion now unless you follow a certain protocol, whether that's being qualified or having an academic research paper that backs you. And I want to really shout at people a lot of the time, although I don't, because I'm human. I'm an instinctual being. Mm. And my instinct says, this is wrong. This is absolutely rotten to the core. And I have got every empathy with the government in the first few weeks. They didn't have the data, but you know what? They did quit pretty quickly because South Africa evidenced that about 50% of people over there under 19 and they weren't losing people. Yeah. And that's because the population demonstrated it was particularly an age demographic. And the second thing that we don't talk about because it's unpopular is we know that one of the major comorbidities is being obese, right? Mm. But the government's been cool about selling your shit for years. I mean, they really care about you guys. They care so much about you that, you know, we'll lock you down, we'll ruin your economy, we'll make you scared for months and months and months. But by the way, why don't you eat a bit of this shit here? Because that's just going to make you fat and that probably will kill you. That's the issue. So what drives me mad about the way that people come for you is they come for you on a monolithic level. Yes. They say, this is the data. We've got this peer reviewed. And there is this screaming hypocrisy and contradiction on the other side. And then there is this absolute mind-blowingly large absolutely catastrophic picture being formed for the working classes and the underclasses and middle class people on the whole with respect no disrespect if you've had a life of privilege i think that makes you probably somebody who can enjoy lots of great mm. things as well as you'll have had your struggles i do not deny that but the idea that people are telling individuals who've not had a penny for all these months, you know what? Just dig deep, cope with it a little bit longer. We spoke about this on one oh. of the shows. Was it Patton Oswald, the US comedian, who mm. said, how hard is it? Just watch Netflix and eat pizza. Oh, God. Hey, Patton, there's a lot of people that can't afford those things. Not only that, it's the general attitude online. I saw a perfect description. I really, really wish I'd saved who it was that tweeted this because he encapsulated it perfectly to me. He said, there was no lockdown. There were middle class people hiding while working class people fed them. I didn't stop working. Did no. you stop working? No, of course not. No. I'd have no house. If no, I, I wouldn't. Working. That's the way, that's the way it goes. We didn't get any help at all. No, none. And w what alarms me is the saying, well, it's for everybody's good, but they're happy for people to go and work in the supermarkets. Oh, yeah. Tesco workers are apparently immune. Yeah. Drive the lorries, do the dirty jobs, Amazon empty workers. the bins. Mm. Oh, the bin. Ben, of course. Definitely Amazon yeah. workers, because whilst we're watching all these small businesses failing, uh, Amazon doing remarkably well. Yeah, COVID's really clever. But something else came out um, today. He says, not remembering where he left. I'm sure I've left one of my packs of notes. But they've decided that one of the, the worst places... Supermarkets. Supermarkets. But they have left... Um, they have left schools and care homes off the research. For some reason well you know it's an odd thing really because we have to get real 
this is the virus. Mm. One, you don't end a virus. Secondly, you don't necessarily want to chase it in the fact that you don't want to advertise everywhere that there's a possibility of getting sick because mm. people are traumatized. And you've got two levels, haven't you, to this? You've got traumatization and desensitization, and you've got somewhere in the middle. And the thing about desensitization is it's powerful. So when you first start telling people there's going to be loads of deaths, like Neil Ferguson did, yes. and then we're all waiting for it, and then not only do those deaths not eventuate in the imagined potential that we thought they would, we then start seeing an eradication of trust by actions of people who are meant to know better, betraying their own rules. But then the big problem you've got is the actual evidence doesn't become apparent to the average human. Now listen, yes. if you worked in care homes, you're gonna have felt traumatized mm. because it's gonna be horrific. That should be an inquiry. What happened there was the government's mistake and it's offensive. I'll just let you know that I, I can't say on air who I heard it from. There are going to be inquiries. There better be. They'll, they'll be originating, the call from them are, are actually originating from the Northwest um, because of what happened to my yeah. mother-in-law and yeah. what the care home Horrific. staff went through there. Uh, there are going to be inquiries into this, whether anything comes of them, but there are going to be inquiries in basically old people being left to die. Right, sent back to the care just homes, to all of that. So like you've got this massive amount of deaths there. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, you kind of look at the fact that people on the whole, if you are under 75 and, you know, your family's relatively healthy, you know, you're probably not going to have lost anybody or known anybody, right? Yeah. So then you get desensitized. So you're not going to get those to trust or those to do whatever you want anyway. No. On the other side, you've got people who are really terrified and it's actually maybe even worth them being terrified too because they've fundamentally been able to pay their bills and have a bit of downtime. Because I think that one of the things I was talking about when I was doing this conversation about workplace changes and like the culture of the conscious workplace that I've been working on a study recently about, one of the things I was looking at there is look for some people, I'm not going to take away the fact that lockdown's probably been a breeze. They've probably loved being at home, not had to commute. You. I don't take that away and I think that's institutional and systemic about failures in our workplace. Mm. I don't think we should be going, oh, like, enjoy that. We should be like, why are you so stressed at work and what can we do to change that? You know, what can we learn from that? But what I really want is for people who are in good situations, and this is the bit that really sticks in my throat. If you are in a really good situation, please can you look at the counter? Because mm. I lie in bed awake at night and all I can think about is kids in abusive homes. And all I can imagine is the two and a half million kids who are black and Asian kids all over the world who are going to die because of the drop in GDP. Yeah. So I don't get the look, me, I get the we. Look at the offer the government have made. You can have five days at Christmas. I mean, piss off. If you have another month in lockdown. I mean, do one. Now, before I even get into the fact that I do not want to be told what to do by the well, government. Just do one anyway. What, what, what science but is that? But here's the thing. Uh, for Christmas. So people don't die. But for Christmas, yeah. I, I saw someone in tears because he had to lay people off. It's just... Businesses have been destroyed. What Christmas have they got to look forward to? Three million people have been excluded in the UK and had no money at all. Yeah. Not a penny. Fourteen million failing. people live in poverty in the UK. Fourteen million people are poorer because of that. Thirty million people don't have access to smart technology because they have a tiny amount of data on their mobile pay as you go. In Two million rich, people richest, don't have an internet. In the sixth richest nation on earth. Yeah, so you ask yourself, who are the voices lending itself to these decisions and i tell you what they are the twitter and yougov polls and nobody actually representative is filling those in oh never i don't i don't know anybody that's that's done a but you're so detached in the aristocracy or the mm. higher middle classes when you've never had to worry about money and you don't understand what it's like to be hungry you look at those and you believe that's representative mm. you don't think oh, there's only 14 percent of people on twitter in the uk and probably half of those are the same people yes because the amount of paid bots I found have been an awakening. That's mm. representing us and it's wholly inappropriate. And that's the bit that I like. I know this sounds really Machiavellian when I say it, but what I love about people is I see how underestimated the ordinary human is. I really do. I like that. I like the fact that government thinks that we are in the palm of their hand to some degree and that people are really congratulating and really for all this. And all I see is this growing unease. And resentment, And the yes. more that they believe what they believe, the more shocking it will be for them. Because I'm telling you, it's time limited now. People mm. will not put up with this any longer. No, no, it definitely is a law of diminishing returns. It, it is. And don't you feel that every empire has fallen because of the common underestimation of the ordinary every, every human? Every time. I every love it. Time.
I mean, look back to the Thatcher days with the poll tax thing. I know it's a much smaller thing. I got told off for that. But people say you okay, can't. At my house. You can't change government. Oh, you can. It just takes enough of you. It takes enough, and it also, I think, these days, because social media has got a brilliant side to it and a really toxic side mm. to it, and also a toxic side will always show itself more than the brilliant side because yeah. people are more motivated by doing negative. People stuff. complain much more readily than they right. praise. Yes, right. Of course, I, I think the, there's another big issue, which is I think the governments have as much control over us now in this age of information yeah. as they had in the 30s mm. and yeah i'm not suggesting boris johnson is the reincarnation of the nazi party but you know a lot of the techniques that we're seeing now oh i know i'm not far divorced Coercive lies half-truths mm. eradication of freedoms that we're just handing away but also like that kind of coercive control is very much like the idea of gaslighting don't so kill granny the idea of traumatization yeah. then giving you a pat on the head and saying oh you can go out now and we'll give you some treats and then get back in your hole yeah. and then they're bad you're good they're terrible you're brilliant that's the way that you create that kind of really confused state yeah, keep people scared mm. we know for a fact i mean well for a fact i assume there'll be somebody like that well have you got a fact checker when we Can come out of yeah data? <laughs> when we come out of lockdown in, t in two weeks if we come out in two weeks we'll be straight back into tier three here in Manchester. Nothing. We haven't been anywhere out of it, have well, we? No, it's going to continue. Although the data is evident today to show you that we won't need to do any of that. Also, the research is saying that now the vaccines are unlikely to be required for most of us because we'll have T cells, which will protect us for around 17 years. No one wants to talk about that. No one wants to talk about it, but that's the beauty again. And this is the great thing that I like about the human race. So at the moment, you can see that Definitely, there are people who are deeply concerned about, for example, a group of very rich people coming to try to take over the world. Mm. And I'm always the same. I always say, well, yeah, that's like always been the case, colonialism and onwards, right? It's always been the case. There's always people who are arrogant enough to think we could do it better. Oh, yeah. And that's the key, that these people don't necessarily think that their ideas are terrible. They think that they know what's best for stupid people. But equally, there are just as rich people who are like, screw you. Yeah. And so what well, I that noticed online exists. is that thing and it's the assumption that working classes are automatically stupid. Because people think, well, we have to look after the idiots. And it's like, you never count yourself amongst that number. The very fact that you're making that statement makes yeah. you an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> and and it, it's this assumption. It's like, well, they just go and carry on back to normal to the pub. It's good. God. Let them do it. Yeah, but they'll kill granny. Except they're not killing fucking granny. I know. Granny died during the lockdown yeah, gran is dying of emotional abuse and loneliness and also the average age to be fair and again 82.4 yeah we don't want to come across like we're saying there's no virus it's a fake no. or anything like that but the average age of dying hasn't changed a great deal i think the problem with that whole thing is like obviously people who are in their 80s are incredibly wise and bright and they make a community richer and we all know hi guys welcome back uh, we were having some really bad youtube problems uh, it was all going out fine from here apparently it was just all getting fucked up when it got to youtube so clearly they're trying to silence us. the work of the devil it is it's the illuminati the, work of the devil the illuminati <laughs> they're, they're, they're like they're gonna us. say something that completely breaks this shit down and it's just gonna be over they don't like lockdown us will just be done they don't like us talking about it <laughs> they don't like us talking about it um <laughs> so we we've had the half time oranges yeah we we're did. all we settled that. we're ready to go um we spoke about people's reactions to poor people about yeah. lockdown and one of the things mm. we, we mentioned briefly that's just come out that lockdown was based on false data data found on wikipedia but we also listened to a, a chap called neil ferguson mm. mr swine flu before he's that, right? very very popular um with the government um so just as a couple of things now remember uh, it, it's really important people realize this is the man the government go to yeah uh, for predictions yeah because he's very accurate yeah he's a scientist a proper one white coat the works lightning all that shit uh he's uh, an epidemiologist yeah. for the imperial college which is nice so he was behind the disputed research that sparked the mass culling of 11 million sheep and cattle during the foot and one outbreak uh, because he predicted that up to 150,000 people could die. Mm. Less than 200 people died yeah. of foot and mouth disease 
11 million cattle and sheep were killed and lots of farmers were put out of business for nothing but he didn't stop there in 2002 he predicted that up to 50,000 people would likely die from exposure to BSE yep. mad cow disease mm. 177 people died mm. from BSE it's still it's 177 Awful. but it's not quite up there at 50,000 no. people no. getting dementia and you get a lot more dying. suicides um in 2005 he predicted up to 150 million people could be killed by bird flu i mean that one on its own i mean 150 he was a little million. bit out 282 people now i'm no expert i'm gonna be honest here. I'm, Neil. I'm, i know <laughs> but i'm gonna say that if you if you have a gamble mm. you should be a little bit closer yeah well you should probably ask him to play a game of like higher or lower yeah oh he went higher go lower. he Just went like, higher 149.8 right. million higher um but he also said that in 2009 he said a reasonable worst case scenario for the swine flu would be 65,000 yeah. british deaths 457 people died of swine flu still far less than die of flu um last march ferguson admitted that his imperial college model of the covid19 disease was based on undocumented 13 year old computer code that was intended to be used for a feared influenza pandemic rather than a coronavirus he's declined to release his original code so other scientists could check his results he only released a heavily revised set of code last week after a six week delay i mean how corrupt is that they still listen to him well, I mean, I don't know who they're listening to. I don't just think it's him. No, I think that he's scientists, data guy, isn't he, for Sage and then it... I think that Valens and Witty are risk averse. I think mm. they also definitely have vested interests in pharmaceutical companies. Mm -hmm. But then you'd expect that. If you're a scientist, you know, as much as you can look at it in the most corrupt light of vested interests and profit potential, you've also got to look at their life, which is that's what they believe in, the medical model, and therefore they probably have invested money in pharmaceuticals because it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, they're going to they're invest concerned. in the thing they know about as well. But you can also understand that that then drives people to question because you're like, hang on a minute, you're going to make how much? But again, I pull back from that because I think that people like money. You're risk averse you see vaccines and you see pharmaceutical drugs they make a hell of a lot of money why wouldn't you put your pension pot there problem is what it reminds me of is the surgeon general in the united states when they banned vaping because mm. it turns out a few kids vaped a load of moody thc well done it which had wax in it which turns Stay to oil from the wax yeah it turns to <laughs> oil in the lungs and that's bad so they banned all vaping just so happens he has shares in tobacco companies absolutely money corrupts without yeah. a doubt and so does it impact on your decision making much as nepotism does mm. and giving your friends jobs and giving your friends Massive all the contracts. roles absolutely but then that's also human nature think about people who employ their son or mm. employ their daughter or employ their friend it's part of what we do so again when you extrapolate that it's not good and it should be not happening but also it's very human as opposed to it being some kind of conspiracy if that makes sense yeah. and it's important to do that because otherwise you can literally lose your mind because you would say to yourself this is all ridiculous isn't it i mean this is ridiculous we've got a man who's been evidentially shown to just make vastly disproportionate reactions to situations that have been proven time and time again it's almost like they wheel him out of a cupboard and he's like this this time he's, he's, he's the human version of the daily express right but he's very risk averse too mm. so again his idea of this drama and the thing about dramas really gets me okay so bill gates has two bunkers mm. people will be like what does bill think's gonna happen because at the end of the day who has two bunkers well bill like many rich people don't really have that many exciting things happen because they can afford anything so when you don't have that much of an exciting life you can kind of go well let's make it a bit exciting what can we imagine Ooh, maybe a nuclear fallout let's build a lifetime bunker underneath the you know my house and actually that's drama yeah that's drama and a lot of these people when you actually look at it in context you can say well it's evil but actually, it's just they are drama kings and well, queens. I think we're living in a time, aren't we, where conspiracy theories, it's the most fertile 
ground. Well, I understand because when you look at conspiracy theories, they've been a lot more right all the way through this than yes. people who at the beginning, like me, were kind of going, oh, this be over in three weeks. It's the temptation, isn't it, though, that, that when once Don't you go get down, down that rabbit hole, mm -hmm. you can't stop. Now, I'm, I'm a believer. But of... I respect people who at least, oh, yeah. I respect what I respect more about people who are conspiracy theorists is they at least look at data. Well, my, my point is everyone should be free to believe yeah, whatever absolutely. they like. Yeah, absolutely. But at I, least they're doing the maths. Yes. I think that it's really hard when the government's not entertaining a discussion because the problem is if you are going to counter conspiracy theorists, and I don't think that we should give people a title with that negatively mm. because actually many conspiracy theories have been proven correct Yeah, it's only a, a theory about a conspiracy. Absolutely, it's... and it's been shown. <laughs> Let's take weapons of mass destruction yes absolutely proven to be correct cost a lot of lives so we know governments lie to us we know conspiracy theories are proven correct you cannot just debunk people in that way you have to listen well, and the only way you'll people's... read it is by ignoring them so if the government's willing to have a honorable discussion with people like michael yeadon mm. an incredible scientist professor levitt one of the yeah. nobel prize winners but no let's just discredit these guys because they're not playing the narrative of course you'll give power well, to this is where it gets right really home. sinister though because i know people are more terrified of chaos than they are anything else i'm a believer in the opportunist theory that bad people will use whatever opportunity to do whatever they can i think that's human nature um although we did speak earlier about critical theory being mm. almost planned in its approach and its attack but that's a different thing I don't necessarily connect the dots to everything else. Um, but what we're seeing from the government isn't just ignoring conspiracy Look theories. Look at the lion. For, um, for example, in Germany, they're ba basically trying to pass something the same as, was it the Enabling Act that the Nazis used where it gave the Chancellor complete power? Oh. They're, they're trying to pass something like that again. Didn't work out great for everybody last time. But also, everyone that thinks here in the UK was safe. We know in Scotland we were, we were chuckling about their proposed hate crime laws. I mean, what has she done? Has she swallowed like a whole movie of contagion and just playing it out oh, in her mind? Oh, it's unreal. It's unreal. But here in the UK, here in the UK, sorry guys, in England, the counter-terror chief of the Metropolitan Police, Neil oh, Basu, he wants action taken on coronavirus anti-vaxxers. And what I found particularly interesting isn't just that now they want to make it illegal to have a different opinion it's how they're selling it as basically this is drawing people to far-right extremism now i know a lot of conspiracy theorists well just far right is. everybody's yeah. got is it like, I'm, I, I, I no, I'm talking like about tag. i'm talking about people, real ones yeah but even if they are it's like they're a yeah. louder thought, well that's fine it's just right? a tag i use it's, yeah. it's not even derogatory no it but, shouldn't be but even the full-blown ones i would say the overwhelming majority are quite the opposite of far right yeah now there are some that are anti-semitic and they, but we're not they, they, those people exist but that's how they're selling it now that if you are an anti-vaxxer which by the way you are apparently an i am i'm an anti-vaxxer apparently i'm an anti-vaxxer anti-brexit anti-white anti-mask woman doing well i mean who knew i didn't i don't get anti-white <laughs> obviously because i look like a fascist um therefore i am a Just terrible racist and i hate everybody so screwed obviously up. it's so screwed up but that's what no doing. well i'm against you so well, apparently i'm anti you no well that's fine I, well, i'm not actually one of them but that's fine i'll take it as a i'll take it as, <laughs> i on know board. you're not but yeah. i'll take it on board i'm not one of them either like, i'm i'm very pro-israeli i'm very pro-israeli but what we do to be fair we do call netanyahu king bibi because it drives people um, I use gifts of him all the time. It really annoys people. But this is how they're selling it now, that if you have questions about vaccines, mm. you are aligning with but the far I think right. That if you ask 95% of police officers what they thought of that, they would say it's a whole heap of crazy. And I would say I that 95% of think... them will still do the job. I'm not saying yeah. that they wouldn't do what they are told to do. Mm. I do think everyone's got a limit. I genuinely do. And we've seen that when we look in places like Berlin and Denmark, where the police were absolutely standing down and agreeing with the public. There's been amazing but things. Isn't that, that what's we've weird seen about there. this? Again, we've seen Black Lives Matter protests in London. BLM, Extinction Rebellion, all of Extinction these. Rebellion, who I firmly believe that next time they glue themselves to the floor, we should just tarmac over them. 
um, be good for the a environment. Bit aggressive. It's not aggressive. We There's can a do lot of children involved in We can, in we that. can do Let's it slowly and gently. Children. We can do it slowly and gently. Children shouldn't be gluing themselves to the floor. That's bad parenting. I think maybe Tom, I can go with him maybe a little bit more serious. All right, over. peel the children off. Leave the adults. It's like that one that glued himself to the train. Oh, what do we do now? I had an idea. Start the train. And at some point, he'll get his hands off that train. Or it will just happen. It's very easy to take care of these things. Terrible. The ones in Manchester, you know, glued themselves to the pavement and the windows. Leave them for the spy sets. See, I love protests. I like believe firmly and passionately in the right to protest. I think it's a bed of democracy. I, I would agree about some protests. I just agree with them. I can't agree Apart with a load of like hate protests. middle class people getting money to drive them down in the Range Rover so they can campaign that poor people have to stop having cars. Mm, no. Yeah, why don't you have a pop at China? Oh, that would be racist. Yeah, but they're really polluted. Yeah, well, we're dealing with here. And then I'm told I'm not supposed to say anything negative about Greta. So that's cruel. I'm like, but I don't believe a 16-year-old girl sued a country without mm. help. Oh, of course not. There's but because I say without... No, yeah. no. No, no, you mustn't. What? Say that PR's involved? No, you well, mustn't I think say she's had help. Be, but I think that, like, genuinely, the general public would understand that there has to be a PR machine behind that. Oh, you mustn't that. say that, though. Why? Because you're taking away from this beautiful autistic well, girl. Which is amazing. The ability... No matter what... Yeah. Listen, no matter whether you agree with global warming or disagree with global warming, whatever you have to say about her, whether she's got a massive... Well, she has to have PR behind you because you couldn't get there I otherwise. said on this, this very show... She's brilliant at what she does. To do what she does at the age of 16... Couldn't do it. Is, is incredible to get up Jeez, in front do you remember of people. what you do when I was saying? I know what I was doing. I know what I was doing at 16. It, was it wasn't what Greta was doing. doing. <laughs> she do what I mean? Maybe Greta could do with a bit more of that. Yeah, I mean, like, I genuinely look at that and I think, I don't think even now I'm in a position where I would have known what to do like she did. I, and I'm not, I'm not pro or against any of that. I'm just there saying is a part that of me, I like protests. But there's a part of me that thinks that young lady has not been allowed to have a child. I think apparently she was really suicidal and mentally unwell, and this has really helped her focus, so whatever works. I can't wait for her to find heavy metal and drugs, though. I bet... That'll do the world of good. she probably... I bet in the background she's probably has a team. She'll have a life. She'll down. have a yeah. life. Her parents seem, like, really cool as well. I don't know. I, I don't know. But, um, yeah, Extinction Rebellion, anyway, Tom, I can, that's fine. But we allow them... The police take a knee of yeah. Black Lives Matter movement. And, you know, it's one of those, when someone says to me, Black Lives Matter, I say, mm. yeah. I don't have to come back with All Lives Matter because it's irrelevant. Black Lives Matter. No, I absolutely. get it. That's your thing. When I see white kids hitting police horses because Black Lives Matter, I'm like, you don't care about black people. You're not there for that. You're there for, you know, I think that, defund like, the police. Violence is acceptable. It's defund the police. It's, it's that, you know, oh, I'm a communist. Or what's the one you got now? luxury communist i'd be really scared if we defunded the police i'd be terrified <laughs> i mean like genuinely let's not do that but at the same time i think that the way that they've treated people who are going to like rise up and so on and so forth is very different to how they've treated other protests and, and that's, that's very worrying for through. me and yeah. i think that also the changes in the coronavirus bill and all the things that go along with that that really disturbs me and certainly i was meant to speak at the rise up protests in manchester and then I was asked not to. Mm. I'm working with Recovery, which is a group of people yeah. trying to lobby the government to get change. And not that they asked me not to, by the way, but there was more of a discussion with people who knew me and they said that I'm preaching to the converted and I need mm. to spend my energy kind of getting people who yeah, are you've, converted you've got on side. you platforms they do not have. And that whole cancel culture is that people do that with me every day. They just try to get me deplatformed every day. Yeah. Well, I can only imagine how many emails and everything must have gone into uh, itv ridiculous because this morning you know that's a huge yeah program and well, of Martin, course he's the like exec on that not that he's for or against in mm. any way shape or form because he is really independent you see that on the show <clears throat> you see that it's just debate so there'll be people who say positive things people who say negative things it's always open but i think that what he genuinely has not that people would be aware because maybe people don't watch this morning who are watching this but honestly he's so into rights for people mm. and he's like massively committed to mental health i don't know whether you're aware of that but like this morning he's got this like massive thing on mental health it's to do with him he's like a real driver martin has this obsession with like male suicide in particular the fact that men are killing themselves and what is happening that men are killing themselves and we're not mm. doing enough to change that so i think because he knows that fully i come from a real core root which is i just want people 
particularly children and young people to be protected so because of that i think that he's not listening to those yeah. negatives and also i work on the suicide panel for the police so i'm like trying to help people to understand those areas and that means that you know nobody would be doing that with me if i was some kind of person going out trying to cause harm that's the opposite yeah. but i will not stand and be quiet when i'm watching one of the biggest social injustices going on before my eyes this isn't meant to happen and also i'm watching things like the world economic forum putting out shit like by 2030, you will own nothing, but you will be happier. I got, what planet are you but on, But does that not sound to you when, when, when you watch that advert? What planet? I oh, planet Zog. But does that Barely, not make it... looks like a Superman baddie. Have you ever said, when someone says you will be happy, has that ever sounded like a threat to you before? Doesn't it? Because you, you, you will, will be, happy. be happy. And don't worry, what we're going to do is we're going to 3D print your organs so you'll be able to live eternally. I mean... You won't own them. What? He, well, no, you won't own you. <laughs> because if everybody carries on with this idea that it's all right that we're walking into as what you said is giving away our rights mm -hmm. then in the end the government will own us you know if the government can tell you what you do with your body like they are with young people right now it's not legal for two young people who are single to go and have sex mm. it's not even legal stay for me to invite graham the, and his family around stay to my house the way away from my body yeah. who the f do you think you are well we were talking about this um previous show uh, we are living in a time where the government can decide who's allowed in my right. house. My well, house. What are we accepting? But that's for your own protection. Yeah. It's oh, it's, protection. yeah, and to save grandma. Absolutely. It's for your own protection. Well, it's like with my folks. We're, we're, that's what happens in abusive relationships. Of course. I've only hit you. It's for your own good. Because you need to learn. Yeah, and it's you know, your own good. I'm only taking this away from you because you need to understand more. It's because I love you. Yeah, it is, it is an abusive relationship with my but parents. We've got to stop, though, haven't we? Oh, yeah, but so the problem what do is. Do? That's the thing when people are listening to we this. Won't. It's like, we have to start saying no. We have to physically say no. And we have to go, well, we're just going to carry on now and we're going to mm. get back our freedom because you know what? That's the democracy. And we're never going to let this happen again. I'm not really interested in the here and now. So basically, do I think that we're going to get taken over by a world order and all that stuff that people worry about? No. Why? Because there are too many people who are just completely the opposite thinking and too many of us to actually let that happen. Do I think we better damn well learn from what's happened now so this never happens again? So that in 10 years, when another one of these things comes, because it's going to happen, it's human nature that these things happen and we're all connected now when that happens you better bot you know bet your bottom dollar that somebody like mike yeadon yeah. is taken and brought into but this and carl problem. hanahan you know professor carl hanahan where they can go this is what's real well we talk about this but the problem i i believe and i uh, i'm not as pessimistic as some i don't see the governments ever giving up this power any powers we cede to them when they say it's just temporary Lord Sumption would say that, yeah, we're going to get them all back. Lord Sumption is fighting. Francis yeah. Kerr is fighting. There are people who I are just, very clever I just have, doing that. I, I know they are, but I do believe that governments are all about power. Obviously, they are. I think there's been power grabbing, mm. definitely, but then I think they like drama. Again, look at Matt Hancock. I mean, come I try on. not to. I've never understood. This is a guy who was really not that great as a trader working in finance. Then he went and worked for his family software company. He's like not that great. But and suddenly them in he's given government. this job and he's like, oh, I'm in control. Look I've at Michael power. Gove. Yeah. The man has actually failed in every position he's been in. And I don't mean just a little bit failed, spectacularly. And yet he's still there. And these are the people now that are controlling our lives in, in a way that's but not happened since the blitz. that control occur. Yeah. See, that's the thing. Like, I'm not one of those people who feels that I can connect with that narrative. So you will not tell me to stay away from my 78-year-old mo mother whose husband killed himself last year. Mm. That my dad killed himself. Fuck you. I am not going to let you stop me seeing my mum for her own benefit. What planet are you on? The NHS until 2020 has said that without a doubt, social isolation and loneliness is the biggest killer. We yes. don't suddenly lose all that research because it's convenient. No. So I actually think that it's only right to peacefully resist. So I'm a peaceful resistor. I do not believe and I will not accept being kept away from my family. Well, it's like we discussed before the show because the, th the thing is with these shows, so you guys know, all the best stuff that you talk about happens when the cameras are off. Because it's all the stuff we can't talk about when the cameras yeah. are on. But one thing we definitely can mention is that if you asked... Don't talk about the murder. No. No, no never. Never. Uh, but if you ask any grandparent... It was his fault anyway. 100%. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was for his own good. It was for his own good. It was for his own protection. You, you did it because you loved it. Absolutely. Um, any grandparent, mm. would you trade two years of, uh, oh, I of safety like, no, yeah. for six months with your grandkids? Yeah, absolutely. Get me the grandkids. Listen, I would, I would, if I'll tell you what now, if this is life, if this is life, if there's a choice of this being our lives versus me only living another 10 years as it was, I'll take the other 10 years as it was. This is not life. This is existence. Yeah, it's dreadful. And of course, we've got it coming out now that, you know, they're, they're talking about the vaccine. They've got the, the, the miracle cure. 95 percent 95 percent efficacy yes. okay but then again there's a few things that we need to be clear about with that so basically when i've spoken to a public health expert whose field is vaccines they've said that what they believe having reading the actual information that they've had on the studies that all it is will it will just reduce symptoms a little bit yes. and actually it should only be used on the very elderly and very vulnerable obviously choice based but it would be a disaster to actually go and vaccinate more than that. So what do we think is going to happen? Put your tinfoil on if you want, it's fine. I think genuinely, as much as I'm obviously very loudly saying that it would be the worst thing in the world for mandates to happen, which it would be, mm. because again, you don't own your body then. I think that the government are starting to realise that the more you force the population, the more pushback you get. And there's a lot of studies that say that. So we've lived in a democracy and whilst in places like Australia where they mandate quite a lot of injections yeah. and if you can't go to school with certain things or you can't get certain benefits, Japan they've done the opposite. So Japan, they're almost like the MMR is banned and then they encourage parents who want to pay for it to go and do it. But they're pretty light on that kind of issue. And they've, I don't know whether you know, about Japan, but Japan's done brilliantly as far as of course they have, their yeah. deaths have gone because they obviously don't have a lot of people who are really ever overweight. since Japan got rid of austerity. Yeah, well, they've been flying exactly. with everything. So you've got that kind of evidence there. I think that even though there will be some people who are like, "This is the best thing ever. Let's just do it." A lot of medics are going to be very resistant. Well, that's the thing. Everyone's basing everything what they've been told so far, and you're an anti-vaxxer if you don't believe it. I mean, I think you're a pro-choicer if you want to know the information. But that's what it should be. Decision. Everything should be pro-choice, but then they say you're killing granny. But the, with this... Yeah. You might kill granny with that. It's possible. <laughs> because we're dealing with a vaccine that's been rushed. I, they can tell well, me all they want about fast-tracking. Yeah. It's very quick. And it's... Some of them... One of... I know it's some of them have skipped animal trials mm. and the last time they did that um no sorry the last time they did it quickly and did animal trials everything looked great and then it mutated and people got seriously ill and also what you have to do and this is what i was talking to that public health expert again last night bear in mind this guy is massively pro-vaccine yeah absolutely but he's really unhappy see he's this. the first person you should listen to he said that and i will try to quote him correctly he said that it would be a fundamental disaster if we were to take this vaccine and do as is being suggested, such as inject all children in Africa, because one in 20,000 children are injured by vaccines, meaning that the issue of injury and illness would be far more significant than if they had caught COVID. Therefore, it counteracts the requirement and also it's actually ethically inappropriate to go ahead and do that and that he related to the whole world but he did say very clearly that if this is safe as in we have enough evidence to say it's safe mm. that he would advise the very vulnerable and very old to take it on the idea that they would reduce some symptoms which could yeah. make it less severe which seems very sensible and this is kind of terrifying because the government have now bought enough to i think is it fully vaccinate half in fact, I fully inject half the population with two doses. So it's clearly their target isn't just the vulnerable. I think they will have people queuing up for this vaccine. It's terrifying, isn't it? I think now, they will. I... But I, you know what? Listen, people eat shit. Mm. People smoke. People drink. People do what they want with the bodies. I'm okay with yeah, that. Yeah, that's fine. It's and their I choice. Think that though. would be okay. Yeah, but I think there'll be lots of people. But Matt, Matt this. Hancock has come out and said, "Well, I can't rule out no, mandatory vaccination." Again. You know how he's done. He's done what he always does. He's gone. I don't know. Yeah, I can't rule it out. I can't rule it. But really, I don't know what, what really mandatory what means. Is, I don't know what they're going to do. Listen, if they were to mandate a vaccine, either a, in an overt way, 
such as you're going to have to have it or in a back doorway you're not going to be able to work mm. no job no job no job which is one of the things i've seen the paper that went into the commons we Jesus. Had read on the show, well yeah. that was actually no that was just an ethical thing to look at they were just it, looking that was at terrifying it. in and of itself yeah, but it's, it's not, not a human rights wasn't violation explored. wasn't even explored no of course that. but it's that thing that this is what bothers me like the the the, the, the um, hate crime things in scotland and here what bothers me is that it even gets to that stage yeah if that never gets through Listen, the fact that it made it to parliament of eugenics listen these things exist <laughs> people go to davos bono goes oh davos is billionaire just, it's a high telling room. people about how bad poverty is all <laughs> right bono why don't you give us a bit of your money you know what i mean it's all a pile of but the fact that bollocks yeah, it's the fact that it gets to be discussed but, oh god it wouldn't any, but wouldn't you. any reasonable government no, if you had a reasonable drama. one but if you had they a reasonable one how cool would they look if they went uh, are you fucking mental well, I think Sweden did really. Yeah, um, well, it's like Iceland dealt with the, the banking collapse in I the perfect think a way. Lot of I'd like to see more that of that. We're not talking about have done a really good job, yeah. and I don't like the idea that New Zealand's held up as this great big example because I think that the minute that it gets out, there will be a problem, and I think yeah. maybe treatments will have improved. We know that they have in the UK, so maybe she'll get a better result because and of that. And there are only eighteen does. people there. Uh, well, the 17. 17 now. Did one pass away? That's I right. am sorry. So we're just of old age and natural causes. Is that, I, I, am, I am terrified of this totalitarian it sort would, of world we're oh, entering I mean, into. Again, when my brain does that and I see it and I can see how that would play out if there weren't the obstacles in the oh, way. Oh, no. Even if they let this go now, even if we get all the powers back, how easy is it going to be to do it again? Oh, I think it's going to be less easy. I think it'll I be think easier. Lessons. But we are also conditioned. But I think that people like me and you, and I tell you what, a lot more on Twitter and Facebook and Insta are starting to say no. Well, bless him, Richie, Richie Allen, um, who, who's coming on the show in a few weeks. Um, good friend of mine. He's since this kicked off, he's like, you know what? Fuck the masks. You're going to be all right. Go out and live your fucking yeah. life. Get out there. Yeah. And, and Richie obviously delivers it with massive gusto and power. But he's been saying that all along and he's right because you know what life will kill you i think we have to have this really big conversation about the fact that death's been around a while well, how much safety do you want well we just don't have a very good relationship i'm so pragmatic about death it's like i'm gonna die and if it happens tomorrow okay i really don't well, have i think this we're more detached fear. from death than any any um generations before I think us. what happened is we've lost spirituality and i'm not talking about religion i'm saying that when you have something to believe in whether that's like me i kind of believe in consciousness continuing i don't know what that means it doesn't really matter it's energy but i'm not afraid of it so because of that when i die and when i accept that it's just kind of cool because i don't think there's any meaning without death mm. but covid just became the belief system i've well, got something to believe death, in it's the only thing mm. that we all do yeah because you know people you say death and saying? taxes yeah, some people don't. i know plenty of people yeah, that don't play taxes but um but it, you know what i'm saying about beliefs yeah like suddenly everyone has something to believe in oh, yeah, covid yeah, yeah. this exists we can't see it but we can feel it it can kill you but we can stop it that's what Let's world culture is community it's, it's a like, religion come on it's the cult around. system isn't it it's the cult system it affects the way people have, uh, have attached it to, to covid yeah the things you'll but, ignore are they real? Like mother nature's a serial killer she's a bitch mother nature kills kills <laughs> more like, people more, more, like, well she kills everyone this is the other thing that's really important that i remember from the guy who's the public expert health expert he said and this really got me he said to anybody saying this vaccination is about trying to heal people let me remember this exactly for anybody believing that this vaccine is intended to heal people, know that trillions of pounds are being spent on its development, and yet malaria will kill millions and millions more, yet they do not put anywhere near the amount in actually saving the lives that will undoubtedly be caused by this disease. Well, something very similar from... Uh... The statistics guy. Mm. On oh, I love this guy. He's Jono. brilliant. Yeah, he's, he's great. Brilliant. I know him. Uh, Eight million five hundred and sixty-eight thousand four hundred and eighty-one referrals for treatment have not been made. No, I know. Seventeen percent more likely to die of pancreatic cancer eight now. Eight and a half million. Mm. And this isn't treatment. Well, get this. This happened two and days some ago. Some of them were being grown toenails, you know. But yeah, enough two... of those are going to be lung cancer. Right. Did you hear about the 
people being checked and they were told it was yeah. might be COVID yeah. and it's lung cancer. Yeah, exactly. It's so horrifying. when I've just dealt with a husband whose wife, four children, she died of brain cancer, she didn't get treatment. Yeah. So she got it withheld. But an example of how crazy these times are, my mum rang up the GP because she can't really hear at the moment. She needs her ears syringing. And they said, we're sorry we can't. She went, why? Well, COVID. She went, okay. And they went, but you can come in and pay for it. Hey. And that evidence is to me my losing respect for the system. I'm really losing respect for the NHS. And I'm not being awful. That's not the doctors and it's not the nurses. Mm. Bear in mind with that. That's not yeah. what I'm saying. I'm saying I am losing respect because I think that we know I've gone in, I've taken pictures of completely empty a &E departments, completely mm. empty outpatients units. That doesn't mean that they've not got people in beds, but we know that they haven't been busy for six months and now they're not busier than they would be oh, usually. Th there's somebody who lives where I live who said she was a COVID like nurse. Quite, <laughs> not in my house, where I live. in the area, <laughs> on the estate. And, um, <laughs> that would be good. Someone that lives where I <laughs> live. She hangs there. around the place. She's always there. I've seen it. Gives she me things on my birthday. She's close to my child. Yeah. She, <laughs> she has a name, Aiden. God damn it. <laughs> we don't mention it though, do we? <laughs> the name that's never spoken. Yeah, no, because... Oh, can you imagine? Um, but the woman that lives round the corner from my fucking house is a nurse. And she called herself a COVID ward nurse. And she was bollocking everyone on Facebook on the little guy. I joined the group to have a fight with everyone because... My son, got, my, son, my, my, no, my son got in trouble with someone because him and his friend did the terrible crime of using a stick to knock crab apples out of a tree. I thought you were going to say like a stick to hit another child. I was going to go, oh, I, I do think Aiden was a definite yeah. issue. No, it was, it was crab apples out of a tree. <laughs> oh, did he make jam? Uh, no, but they did post his picture on a Facebook group. Oh, I hate that. And I had a very forthright I discussion bet you did. with these people. That's a violation. But she was like, I noticed the children were out playing. I, I walk during lockdown. Me and my son would go out, go for a walk. He'd be rolling, I hope so. blading, you know, all these things, just out. Yeah. So he doesn't get afraid at the time. You know, when it was at its peak, if you'd seen what I seen, you were so like, what have you seen? The deaths from COVID. What do they look like? You wouldn't believe me. Oh, I might. Well, you don't need to. In other words, you've, you're a fucking cleaner. You change the sheets in a fucking empty ward and you're afraid. I, I mean, get I it. Think, I think what one of the things that you've got to think about as well, though, I was talking to a nice user consultant the other day and obviously pneumonia and like flu and any respiratory deaths are not nice, are they? Because no. it's like a choking to death and not being able to breathe has got to be one of the most horrible things. I nearly died of flu in 2000. So I got a really bizarre influenza strain. I was in hospital for three day, three weeks. I was in critical care for three days. I signed my death benefits form. So it was serious, mm. right? Really serious. And now when anybody says they've got flu and they're stood in front of me, I want to hit them. I've only had flu once it's in my like life. It's like you not haven't that got good. flu because you can actually speak. Yeah. But obviously back when this was happening, I imagine that any death is traumatic to see, but if you're an ITU nurse or doctor, you are a certain mindset. What they did was they redeployed a hell of a lot of people mm -hmm. who might have been on orthopedics or pediatrics or just enjoy being death. with people, right? So you can imagine you've never really gone into that situation. Maybe you've never worked in December or September or October as it starts to get busy. And all you're seeing is people coming in and 50% are dying because that's what you're seeing. And in hospitals where it was very busy, like you can't say that in somewhere like Portsmouth, had a very interesting conversation with somebody who got in touch with me and told me that he had life and death decisions to make over children and who got the ventilators and I've tracked back his hospital and it had less than 200 deaths and also they'd all been over 60. But this is the doctor who was telling me this. So even propaganda there, I've taken yeah. pictures of it because I don't think the GMC should employ people who do those kind of things. But what I'm trying to get across there is you've got the wrong mindset to deal with that circumstance. Mm -hmm. I think I'm somebody who can deal with that circumstance. I've worked with high level trauma. I hear horrible things. I've been involved with those kind of situations. I also know that people get vicarious trauma just from listening to nasty stuff. Yes. So you have to have a mindset. So I'm with you in the fact that some people have been through horrible, horrible experiences. Some people will have just been able to manage it, but definitely during that April particular surge where like thousands of people died in care homes and elderly died in hospitals, mostly from transmission as well at times in hospitals. Or just pneumonia. It doesn't matter. Those things were yeah. awful, right? Yeah. Because 
that's going to be something we've got to acknowledge. And I think it's important too, because I think when people don't acknowledge that massive spike, it decreases our evidence elsewhere. Yeah, I do get that. But I also believe that some people just fucking love telling other people what to do. Oh, and giving yeah. giving yourself in massively false authority. Oh, my God. I'm absolutely yeah. with you there. And I think that I still expect in my job when I'm working with trauma to hear it. I don't go, right, well, now this has become more people being traumatized. I don't want to hear it anymore. Or I'm super important because I'm hearing it. Like, you choose your vocation. Yeah. Don't choose your vocation and then get angry with the fact that that's your vocation. If healing people and looking after dying people is part of your job, then I think that's a really important job you do and you should be absolutely valued for it. Mm. But I don't think that that makes it something that then becomes mm. in a special Trauma category. On the Thursday when you were supposed to stand yeah. here, when that kicked off, that was after my, my mother-in-law had been left mm. to die by the NHS. In a care home. Just don't oh, The doctor wouldn't visit. The only yeah, time anyone that. went out was with end-of-life drugs. I know that. It was just pneumonia. Could have been treated, but yeah, it's happened. I can't, we can't change it. Well, someone said, but still, it's really awful to go through a death like it's that. It's fucking brutal. Um, but one of the neighbours um, who was sheltering because his wife had cancer, so I'd nip for things for them sometimes, and he said, I'll see you at the door on Thursday. I said, no, no, you, you won't. Well, I said, well, they've just killed my mother-in-law. I wouldn't have done it anyway because it's not what I do, but I said, I I'm not clapping for any of them. The heroes not mine see i'm struggling because i'm suing the nhs for my dad's death so mm. it's very hard it depends on your subjective experience well you it? can't I help to it some can people you? who've been saved or had their my dad they've saved my dad they keep him alive yeah and you know what his doctors i'll go and tell them and i have i'll thank them but at the same time my dad last year um had a stroke mm. they sent him home twice they no, sent him home once i took him back spent another whole day there and they wanted to send him home again and i kicked off they kept him in they found out he'd had a stroke so not my heroes no a good doctor you'll thank mm. and you know a lot of them are selfless incredibly hard working people oh god yeah that have to come across arrogant be really because hard, otherwise yeah. they'd go insane yeah but you know what there's a lot of assholes there as well they're always in every job exactly yeah. self-important pompous pricks who've reveled in the applause and yeah, oh, let's put another TikTok video. Do you know what? Don't ta don't put TikTok videos out. You're supposed to be overrun. I think that's one of the hard things as well, though, because that stuff, you know, when you look at the people who are working in the intensive care units, mm. they must have been having such an yeah. incredible. But don't do it in the hospital. It's a stupid fucking idea because it erodes any trust. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. That that kind go of... home and do it. Yeah. Um, but we're all there going. <laughs> or in my case, on my street, someone had a fucking vuvuzela. I, I, I watch quite a lot of evenings. Me and my son will watch a TV show or a film. It's our time together. Yeah. And uh, it was a Thursday night. We weren't doing the show because we weren't allowed in here at the time. And I remember we went, oh, God, not again. Because just like, there's, some, there's always some prick banging pots together. But my favourite one on the clapping, I'm going off tangent now because yeah. we're getting near the end. A couple of the more um, robust chaps where I live decided to do clap for Boris. When he was, when he was ill, it was the loneliest thing I've ever what heard in my life. I opened the window, so listen, it was just like, yeah. But that's another thing that I don't process very effectively: the fact that we're being told that this vaccine, which is going to be a live vaccine, mm. so that you can create antibodies. I have antibodies. I've had a test, a blood test, and I apparently have had it, and I have antibodies, and I didn't even know. So there you go. There you go. 17 years for me. Thank you very much. <laughs> I've got my certificate. So basically, one of the things that you see there is that why is he self-isolated? He had COVID. Yeah. So then he's got antibodies. Because he's been told to. But again, you either say that we're in a situation where a vaccine would work, meaning if your exposure triggered your antibodies, therefore providing you with immunity, you either have it, meaning that Boris is okay, or you don't have a vaccine that works yeah. because it can't work. So you're like, even isn't it, isn't it without ironic? that kind of, and also this is what pisses me off as well. What really annoys me, and we talked about it a little bit earlier on is, 
I cannot get my head around on social media why everybody wants you to have a PhD now. Yes. I don't get it. It's like, it's social media, right? I've actually created a social media platform so that people can't censor, mm. but also so I can get rid of trolls. <laughs> it's like, you can come on here and you can say whatever you want. We'll have the link in the description. But I'm going to delete you if you're not. But the thing about that police officer as well, like again, that censorship idea, if you actually go further with that and you look at some of the modifications that they're looking in AI, because I've got a tech company, so that, that sounds really grand. I'm really poor. Spent all my money on a free app. Tell them that. But yeah, okay, like it's, it's, it's for the good of the human race. But basically, if you look at that, then you've got issues where they're talking about wanting to be able to know what you think before you think it. There's like this kind of idea that they're going to be synergizing with thought processes. And therefore, in maybe 40, 50, 60 years, you will think something. And before you think it, they will come and get you, right? Now, I would be definitely in prison immediately. I set people on fire in my head. It's like a constant thing. If like, I'm looking at you and smiling at you, but you've pissed me off, I'm pr you're on fire. Yeah. They're gonna be in my house dragging me away going, this woman is a pyromaniac. She wants to murder people, but I don't. It's just my way of stress relief is yeah. to imagine what could happen to you <laughs> if I happen to be a serial killer. If you were on fire. If I happen to, you know, be in a situation mm. where you upset me and I had gasoline and a match and didn't have the boundaries I've got you know that's what we do to cope so you get into really murky territory when you start trying to get into people's thoughts as a parent do you not have it, it's some of the darkest thoughts if anybody hurts my child yeah and not yeah, only that what if this happened to my child what if that happened mm. it keeps you in a constant especially when the new yeah. keeps you in this constant state of terror yeah. but if anyone looked at those thoughts you're awfully fascinated with a child being hurt it's like, no no i'm <laughs> yeah. fucking terrified Try to imagine a hundred ways i'll bubble wrap them but all these things go through your mind constantly yeah it's but just human nature we are coming close to thought policing yeah we're coming dangerously close to you well we actually twitter does that yes you have a thought and then people police it yeah and also people are liars online i i found that quite surprising i know that sounds really naive but my twitter family and i call them my twitter family and i've got my insta and my facebook my twitter family because i'm on there more than anything because it's short firstly i get a lot of support from them before all this as in it's always felt like a really supportive loving climate and i chat with them and i have fun with them when people struggle i put out things so that people support each other and i've always felt like even though people talk about toxicity i've never experienced it and then boom covid and it's been so shocking because mm. there's the 77th brigade didn't even know that was real I had to look it up found it that's out. how twitter's always been for me I, I didn't know bots. it was any different there are all these people who look like people but actually if you track them you can see like 400 different people with the same yeah. comment and i'm like man this is really toxic i got suspended three times in one day last week did you was one, it the same you <laughs> one of them for the dictionary definition yeah it was actually my account as well dictionary definition of woman misgendering but this other person had about 20 accounts most of them male right but twitter went oh you've been a bad boy fixer but the up uh, the rare time i've reported someone on there they always come back to me going nah, just fucking walk it off big boy i'm like I'm, oh, fuck it, yeah i think people have to be really careful these days though because twitter obviously when it comes down to like transphobia and all of those areas and particularly when it comes down to the thing about woman because woman is different to female yeah but they're not that careful when it comes to people threatening to kill women so yeah, no, apparently that's, that's totally okay inappropriate. I, I, twitter though is in is in the thrall like most of uh silicon valley of oh, mark zuckerberg wants to just like mark zuckerberg doesn't want you to be able to have an opinion anymore mm. mark wants you to be fed opinion mark is going to own the is going to be the internet mark looks like an alien he's very very strange do you not just think like mark he's like, very unusual I, I often look at bill and i think bill and his wife melinda and they look like they've got a 1980s grattan catalog and yes. ordered anything beige and blue oh yes and i think that if you were an alien you would definitely dress that way you're mm. just like a breath away from being amish but can you imagine but amish an, people are really nice and they've got it game. right can i just say that have no ever, technology have you ever sat there and thought those people like they've seen something and like they have got it so right they're self-sustainable they make a fortune selling their goods mm. they seem really quite content but then again when any of them do go off reservation <laughs> they really go off reservation well you would if you're gonna but leave can you imagine you're gonna an evening with mark zuckerberg 
Could you ever imagine him being more uncomfortable? Someone, someone, I forgot who he was. He spent quite a lot of it angry with him. Well, someone went to his house and he fed them meat that he'd killed himself or something. Mark's really, so the other thing that people aren't aware about is a lot of people like Gates are investing in fake meat. Mm. So if you'll notice the commercialization of veganism, so I'm like somebody who doesn't kill in my family. I mean, not human, I mean, yeah. only, only humans. Only the long <laughs> only, pig. Only the adults. I don't kill animals. So we obviously have noticed that since my eldest son's become vegan, and he was just veggie, but he's vegan now. Honestly, when I was a vegan as a kid, I, like, I lived on chips. That was it. Chips, mm. maybe like some like muesli, uh, very unhealthy stuff because that was all I could get. Mm. And I was poor. He everything chocolate you can get because they put all the money and you have to ask yourself that question don't you why have they put the money into fake meat and it's clearly because they're highly into the idea of global warming mm. and they're highly into the idea of protecting the environment now also ask yourself well what does that mean if gates and all of that law i'm not talking about anything to do with conspiracy i'm yeah. talking about money yeah if they are investing all their money in trying to reduce your meat intake that must mean that they're highly involved in the idea of global warming. Yeah. And that means they must wish to keep you away from nature. And they also need to be very concerned about population. And why not make a lot of money out of it? I want to know why they're not doing more about the lab grown meat that they were making great strides with. You know, where they took like basically one chicken feather mm. could feed thousands because they can grow the meat. Because they realized that it's easier to do the. Do you know what? If they develop that, I would give up meat in a heartbeat if they just like grew a fake chicken yeah it, well what they do they grow the what muscle you, tissue what are you putting your body you weirdo it tastes nice i don't care that's uh, emma i'm just gonna, emma, like just hydroponically grow me a chicken that's really far and away not the worst no. thing i've put in my body so it's absolutely fine no <laughs> um this no they, they grow the muscle texture they've done no. they've done tests where people have ate them and it tastes the same but it's not though it's just it's not it's it's been grown it's have you checked out how they make some of that vegan shit? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's, that's very unhealthy and Veganism should be like that. The whole pre pre Nuts premise of veganism berries. should be foragers stuff. It's like, it should be like healthy shit. Because vegans are meant to be the food for the carnivores. That's 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 what it is. They have to be fed berries and nuts. Well, it's all right, because you'll just be able to take some skin cells and grow yourself a human with this That'd new technology and just eat it because it won't we're be not legal. Far, I've got to be careful going too far into those. We'll end up in transhumanism. And that's where it all gets a bit shady because I'm, I'm, I can't wait for nanotechnology and oh, things. No. The idea can, no, but think about the possibilities. Until somebody hacks your brain and you kill a baby. Yeah, well, do you know, that could happen. That will happen. But also, nanobots could be used to go in and kill cancer. They don't have to be intelligent to Maybe control your brain. Maybe we need to look at how we could help cancer think, by potentially living better lives. Yes, but also the thing with nanobots, I think everyone's gone about 300 years too far. Yeah. They're not going to be very intelligent. They're going to be able to do one job because we're talking about something like the, smaller than the follicle of yeah. a human hair. They will have one job, one program. So what if that is to clean the plaque out of the brains of people with Alzheimer's? What if it is to repair spines on a level that we can't because we're human with big human tools? You know, what if it is to remove cancers? I just think it's going to be like Elysium. I just think it'll be like really rich people getting all the great stuff and yeah. really poor people. Oh, but it will. It, eventually, do medical technology will. That, but it will never make everyone live forever. But wouldn't it be better if we just screwed that and got back to being healthy and accepting that we're going to die? Yeah, but like wouldn't, it, wouldn't it be nice to live in a world, to be fair, and I, I've made my health choices a long time ago, where it would just be, do you know what, we can't conquer death yet. No, nor should we wish to. But do you know what, if, if you're gonna if you're gonna drop off anyway around 1890 when shit just goes completely south, oh, but you know, why yeah. suffer before then? Why so? Because pancreatic cancer. Terrible. I mean, we talk about other cancers more. Mm. Um, 17 percent increase That's i knew someone that died of lung cancer Remember don't get me wrong no. it wasn't nice no. but i saw someone die of pancreatic cancer Painful. i would take the lung cancer i'd rather not have to choose but i would i'd take a brain tumor i would take over euthanasia it. yeah well we're I not really allowed are we i believe that that should be here i find that assisted suicide and euthanasia should be here but a lot of people have the same problem with nanobots have a problem with euthanasia saying it'll be abused i'm a huge believer that um, when my dogs get to a certain edge and yeah, can't cope, straight, put them down. I can take them to the vet, mm. break my heart, cry like yeah, a baby, right. 
but I've done the right thing. Right. Now, it doesn't mean I want to go and take Grandad to the, the, the no. knacker's yard, but it does mean that as Why a, are you taking me to the vet? Yes. <laughs> just, shh, Dad. Just, just, you, you're just going just, to go yeah, to sleep. Just, you just, yeah, that's right. There you go. I'm just going to leave you in the room with him. Can you put the cannula in him while I'm at the front? I don't like to watch the injection. Um, <laughs> but it is, how can a grown adult not have the choice to say, mm. do you know what, I've had enough? Oh, I agree. Enough pain or enough enough depression? Because yeah. when people said, well, you can't allow it for depression, well, great, they'll go and throw themselves in front of a train. Well, my dad killed himself, and I wish yeah. he could have done it in a way that wasn't what I had to cut down. Horrible, and, and, and doesn't affect others in the same way. Yeah. Because a lot of a lot of suicides now we're seeing more and more people live streaming them. Yeah, well, I think that that's about a desperate want to to be connected and to feel. But it's hard. I saw one alone. guy. One guy did one, knowing his mother was watching, mm. and he blew his head apart. Yeah, my kids told me about that. He put it on TikTok, didn't he? Yeah, and you know these people are mentally unwell at this time. Well, I think as well it's that rebellion as well as desperateness. Yeah, and and but the fact is, wouldn't it be much better? Yeah, if they could it do would, it without hurting it would be anybody better else. If we could just make sure that our society knew how to heal. But there will always be way. people that we've had enough. Yeah, but not compared to like, okay. So no, it's an epidemic. Look, like, like if you look at, there's a religious community um, down south, and there's a few other communities that tend to be very spiritual based. They just don't have suicides. Mm. And it's not just because of the undercurrent of morality supportive regarding community. the fact that they think it's the sin. It's because of that. It's a so we have community. everything we need. What's really problematic is we're becoming more individualistic. If you look at the way that children are reacting to this lockdown, you have some who are being highly traumatized and some who are getting health anxiety, OCD and all of those. But let's take teens who have maybe just been off school and stayed in. They've got so used to being on headsets, the individualism mm -hmm. of it just doesn't feel too detached from what they used to. That's problematic because that's really bad for them. But we've almost orchestrated a society that thinks that it's good for them and now they're bringing out reports that say things like gaming which i am completely pro i think gaming's brilliant i think headsets are an amazing youth club that you can just have on and i think whatever you need it's been a lifesaver during lockdown absolutely but it's not good enough compared to having an experience yeah, of I think, being i don't know about most kids i know the kids where where we are some of them are antisocial little bastards of problem my, my son loves gaming yeah and chats that everybody on but headsets. do you know what getting a chance he will turn that off and go outside. And that's what we should encourage everybody to 100%. do. 100%. We've been pushing him to do it. I do think it. we've been programming kids to get more used to this idea of not really going mm. out. And so I'm having a real problem with lockdown. I'm kicking off and I'm shouting and I'm telling people that this is not okay and I'm really going against the narrative because I want out. I want mm. out of this for my kids and for their futures. I don't want the burden of the debt. I don't want their lives to be ruined by the economy being screwed. I don't want poor kids to not be able to eat and so on and so forth. But at the same time, I'm worried because I'm looking and thinking, have they been like creating a system where kids just get used to being in a room and if that's the case as adults as mentors as people who know what's right for human beings we need to be pulling them out of that and we need to be changing a system that's slowly coercing them into a position where they will literally feel that it's acceptable to just communicate online. Yeah. You know, look at the fertility rates. We're <coughs> having 33% of fertility. We don't know why people aren't having kids in the natural way, but it's okay. You can just pop to a clinic and get pregnant. Do you understand what I'm saying? Everything's yeah. becoming big business and money <coughs> and everything's moving away from what makes us natural I, I, so and I mean, human. Obviously I've not been on the dating scene for, for, for 27 years, coming up for 28 years. And you know, I watch now that the majority of people now apparently mm. meet. I on, guess so. Online and through dating yeah, you sites. Would, wouldn't you? And I can't. I remember just thinking how desperately I sad that is. I just got in loads of trouble. Because how exciting was it back in the day? You go to the club. Oh yeah, that was exciting. But you remember how rare it, it was, was scary. as well? That you actually copped off. Yeah, it didn't matter though, because it's, it's, it's you know it's, it was the just the way, and then you had to connect with someone whether it was just a one night or someone you're gonna have a relationship with and you met someone not because an algorithm decided you were suitable for each other just because you made eye contact yeah and wouldn't you just be allowed to go wouldn't me? you just like to be able to go and shag somebody though i would like that yeah but that's, I that, like that just happened be like, oh, as well God, i didn't meet anybody at the club yeah yeah that, <laughs> do you that, want to hook up but I mean, that, that isn't cool. that what isn't that what the last five minutes before at the night when everyone said there's a On frenzy floor, yeah, a feeding yeah. frenzy just anyone anyone 
Um, yeah, but I think you've got a lot of choice now online, you know what I mean? But, but it is, isn't it dreadful? It's an algorithm that shows you people. Well, it's also human bias because we're like, oh, I, I just care about people's personality. And then you're like, so she's only 6'2", over 50K, <laughs> blonde or brown. You know, it's like everybody but it's likes this, to I believe just, it's about the person. I really worry that when my son, yeah. who is eight, and his mother has told him it's going to be at least 10 to 20 years before he starts dating. Yeah. Um, they're not going to be going out to clubs and pubs to no. meet. It's going to be some kind of weird... Facebook has chosen these people for you to approve yeah. of. Because Facebook are going into dating. Oh, Facebook can go into anything. Well, yeah, Facebook are the most that. predatory company around it's at awful. the moment. Um, and the fact that my, you know, my future daughter-in-law, or something like that, I, I don't know, um, will be chosen by Facebook. Do you ever think that all the films that you watch and you kind of see them, I see them so premonition-based sometimes. Mm. Like, I watch them and I'm like... I'm sure I've been told this somewhere along the line. But drunken mistakes are going to be a thing of the past. Well, that depends. <laughs> yeah, because the thing you've always got that... I think there are always room for drunken mistakes. <laughs> but you've got the mistakes. time, haven't you? I imagine from swiping to meeting. Yeah. I don't think an Uber brings them <laughs> straight round. See, at least you've got five minutes to go... Nah, nah, nah. But in the old days in a club, you're both buried. Within five minutes, you, you, you're like... I didn't have any success when no. I was younger in clubs. No, that's where I, I met my wife. Yeah, well, you had you you nailed it. I didn't like clubs. Oh, to quite me often were, I didn't nail very much. <laughs> perpetual, perpetual disappointment to me. Mm. So I would have like enjoyed being quite an empowered woman. And as a young person, I was pretty empowered, and I've always been quite liberal. And I really don't buy into like women having bad reputations and men having good reputations. I would have really enjoyed being able to think, all oh, right, they're not looking for anything but a hookup. Mm. I would have found that pretty cool because then I would have been able to just not worry about the conversation and not worry about the awkwardness of whether I'm going to like that person. So I think for me, that would have been effective, mm. but that's more to do with the fact that at a club I would have just been like dancing. I think I just want young people to suffer as, as we did. I don't think it's fair. Well, my son is like, he's like... My son gets everything. Yeah. TV on demand. Well, you've got a younger kid. He my, can't, he can't driving. My lad can't understand how when I was younger... You had to wait for shit to come on the television. So my elders kind of, they both understand it because I've brought them up with that real connection with mm. what was. But my eldest boy just like goes out. He got brought home by the police not as long ago. <laughs> and they were like, he shouldn't like be out with his friends in a car. And then they were really nice. So to be fair to the police, they obviously thought it was madness what they yeah. were having to do. But they, he's just got on with it. And he's got a girlfriend. So like they're just out all the time. I just make whenever the boys come round and his friends come round and make them like watch things politically mm. and it's great because kids wake up really quickly They're see like, we just watch the mandalorian and horror films you shouldn't be watching i love horror films yeah I, well my son's got What's a really mandalorian oh that's not mandalorian's not a horror film it's a star wars series oh i started it watching is, it the other it day it is the finest the original it's the original guy well um, the actor the actor boba fett it. turned up the, the, that yeah. Pete, you know that Pete was telling me the New Zealand guy. People like, yeah. What's his name, Pete? The original guy in Mandalorian, oh, Boba Fett. <laughs> but oh, I thought you meant the actor guy. himself. The actor it's himself. the guy from New Zealand, isn't it? Yeah, it's not. Not I, actually. I'm going to really nerd out here. You, you're going to like Did this guy. Do you realize he collects Star Wars it, all from the beginning? He's not the original Boba Fett. Isn't the original he? Boba Fett was Jeremy Bullock. Yeah. Oh. Who is dead? <laughs> that would explain it. There you go. But well, when's he thought, from? Jeremy Bullock. No, the one, not the dead one. I mean, if you can raise it. The guy that played Django Fett that became Boba Fett. Yeah. He's from New Zealand. He was in a film called um, Once really Were Warriors. Geek. Yeah, but Once Were Warriors. I've seen Once Were Warriors. He's the guy in that. He's the bad guy in that. Bad guy. He's the guy in that with all the problems. You're like a real. I fucking love films. But like Star Wars and stuff. I'm. I'm like that with every film that Pete's I watch. He's got like all the collection of toys. I'm more into kid. horror films. George like Romero is my Star Wars. You know, he's my Lucas. What's your favorite horror? Uh, Day of the Dead. Yeah. Only because it's really dark, and it's it was I was 14 when it came out. It was you know you always remember the things from pivotal Nostalgia. times in your life. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. I was so looking forward to it. I used to buy Fangoria. I did make effects when I was a kid. That's all I wanted. No way. And the day it was supposed to come out. You did make up effects. Yeah, I did I'm one film those. and two TV programs. Um, but it was supposed to come out. Do people know that? Some do, some don't. Um, the day it was going to come out, we were going to go and stay with family in Leeds. 
and I would not have got to watch Day of the Dead. I was heartbroken. I was heartbroken. The guy from the video shop, and I wish I could remember his name, bless him. He said, he rang me up, said, it's coming. It's coming oh. a day early. I've got it here for you. So my parents took me to the video shop. I was 14. I love this. And they went and sat in the kitchen to allow me to have a darkened living room to watch a horror film I should probably not have been watching at 14. But then again, with I my love your parents. Oh my! I hope they got you some like with the really expensive popcorn that you like used to. Look no, no, just the, the dark room at the time. There was no <laughs> expensive popcorn. Um, but no, my parents were a strange mixture of old-fashioned but incredibly progressive. I never had a. Video. They got a lot right by mistake and just being the way they are. But yeah, Day of the Dead was a huge film for me. Love films. And I let my what my son. He's not watched that one yet, but I let him watch horror films because. Don't be telling people that they'll be sending line. Thought, oh, please. they already ring the social services getting... on me all the time. Um, but I have let him watch some horror really? films. Really? Please tell me that they don't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who does that? Assholes. People watching. Yeah. They ring oh, social no, not services. Oh, no, it's usually people off Twitter. Because someone like me must be a terrible father because I've done websites where people die on them. I mean, I don't kill them. They, they that, would, that would explain. But my son understands what's real. Yeah, he understands what's real and what isn't. He knows about makeup effects. Yeah, and I just mean I can't. He can watch things with monsters in, but I won't let him watch obviously Last House on the Left. Same as I won't let him watch an, an adult gangster film. Monsters are fine. Monsters are healthy. He gets them. He's never once woke up in a screaming nightmare about monsters. No. People, you know, odd things, you know, giant carrots and shit. Yeah. I found a <coughs> knife taped under my youngest son's bed. And then For I the opened monsters. his kitchen bathroom bathroom um, cupboard and he had a knife in there and I said why why have you got a knife and he's like well people break in I was like but even if they do I don't think killing them is an appropriate reaction yeah that's <laughs> not like, what we do here we don't need to because they're not going to kill us real. I'm like who do you think is coming for American us American culture has gotten very deep <laughs> he thinks because I get threats oh they're going to turn and up. because like I speak out he thinks that somebody might come to bump me off right I'm like listen They'd get in and sit them down and lecture them and they'd want to kill themselves at the end of it. I remember when, with, with the website Lively, uh, we once hosted a video by Geert Wilders, a right-wing Dutch politician. So it was within our rules. It was a shitty anti-Islam video. It was crap. But, oh, there was trouble. There was big trouble. The, the UK press couldn't find my actual address because it's not that easy. But they did tell people roughly whereabouts I lived because I wouldn't give an interview. Because I'm not going to defend the indefensible. It's not my job. No, but um, we 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 got death threats. <laughs> and also, from... it makes you seem like you're in, engaging. Yeah, with it, massive then. death threats from jihadists or, or people of that ilk. To the point, I moved the family away. Wow. Um, I guess for them though, it's really offensive, oh, yeah. we, isn't it? We when put, people we put and stuff you're in place by association. Yeah, then. we put stuff in place that if anything happens, should be looked after for X amount of time. And the video was taken down by Gate Builders. Oh no, we took it down so we could get everyone moved in safe. When we took it down, the death threats then came from the right wingers who, who were angry that I was kowtowing to as well. But the thing is, nothing happened mm. because nine times out of ten, people are just angry. It's just bullshit. Yeah. But the the funny one was, I was not long after I had to go to Holland. I was invited to a press freedom day, and I was stopping off uh, at the um, airport in Amsterdam, and Geert Wilders people knew I was going there. They said, "Oh, do I?" get a coffee one of his researchers get a coffee. well one of his researchers <laughs> so i said fine i'm at the airport but it'll be at the airport right, and then i'm flying up. and i had to fly off to maastricht there was no fun <sighs> and she said all right we'll get a coffee because you know just a normal working person it wasn't like you know they weren't yeah. him when they said would you like if we brought gate along i went no 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 they're like well why i said well two reasons number one i don't fucking agree with him yeah absolutely and number two he has an armed guard I don't. And when I'm photographed having a cup of coffee with that bastard, I'm going to get done in. And, oh, that is so fair true. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. And also, I'm just not that desperate to meet anyone famous, let alone get fucking Wilders. You know? <laughs> we hosted this video, that'll do. I think, though, that it's a really challenging time, isn't it, full stop? Because I think balance is really important, and I think that censorship is really bad. But then you also have to appreciate the nuances in between. And as you found there, it's that sense of sometimes... I think there has to be choices. Yeah. I'm very big on this because 
people demand everything of everybody else i think every yeah, people platform do, don't they like, like every, yeah. i get people being oh, I get angry it. with me if i don't respond and i'm like i didn't see it and then they're like you didn't respond to well with the before. websites i've been involved with because it doesn't match their level of uh, of freedom i want everyone to be allowed an opinion but i think everyone this is what Just i used to love about the internet though be, i want everybody it's one to say i want everybody to have an opinion because I think that it's better to see it, even if it's terrible. But you can do something. You should with have it. a right on your platform to say I don't want to hear your opinion. Right, and you because also that should is be not the same as saying for you doing things that are terrible. But that is not the same terrible. as saying I you can't have an opinion. No, it's I don't want to listen to it because well, their it, right to speak does not trump my right not to listen. Ricky Gervais says that the thing about Twitter for him is that it's like seeing an advert for guitar lessons and then ringing the person and shouting at them saying i don't want guitar lessons stop saying that i can yeah. get guitar lessons and i get that but i think that what worries me about the lack of people feeling safe to speak out now and i will always come down to the fact that i think hate speech is dreadful and i do think that that should be taken to task on any level whichever side because you know racism real homophobia sexism and so on and so forth i just find it unnecessary but i'd rather see it mm. because i can at least do something with it when you tell people that they're not allowed to have a view all it does is it means that they'll find other people with views that can't be challenged because yes. they'll connect in that way and i understand that and also if you call them monsters they're going to go to the people that say you're not a monster right because your bias is going to do that so you have to make everybody's space be free and i find that a real struggle at the moment because i find the level of intellectualized arrogance really unnerving but this is where the internet used to be brilliant mm. because you didn't have this central space like the lead ball and the rubber sheet right. you didn't have that you had lots of different websites like forums and things i like believe that. every website should be allowed to set its own rules if you want to say i don't want you to use the word green on my website that is your Prerogative. right and if i don't agree with it I can say it anyway and get banned, or I can go somewhere else. And I'm a, I'm a massive believer in that. Every everyone should be allowed to set their own boundaries. Yeah, sure. You're not stopping somebody else. No. You're just saying I don't want it. However, we do have now, and I used to be a big believer in that across the board. But we're at a point now where Facebook and Twitter are so big. They're beasts. That it directly chills. Now I believe, as as odious as I might find sexism racism homophobia you know anti-semitism holocaust and all these things i believe everyone has the right to say it now on a, a platform you can ban it or have a platform that's for it or have a platform that's accepting when you have twitter mm. you have something with so much power mm. and that they can create so many problems you can't have a private company <coughs> setting its own parameters mm. i think when it gets that large it's got to be by law it has to be by law because we are seeing whether people like it or not conservatives being hammered far more mm. than i'm not going to say liberals than, than leftists you know um we are seeing an innate bias because people are biased you can be part of an organization that isn't biased but you cannot be unbiased it's impossible we're, we're not wired that way mm -hmm. we can try and we can respect sure. but we've always got preference we've all got an inherent bias to, whatever yeah, we to, right to, or wrong. to everything it's hard not to yeah it's how we are it, yeah. you know some some people like this some people mm. are i fucking hate anchovies mm. but uh, luckily no one gives me shit for being biased against anchovies there's there's, there's time now um I, I think when you get to the the large sites mm. you've either got to follow the rule of law or just suck it up because mm. you know you can always not pay attention to people yeah i think that when we've got younger people though being horrendously harassed and cyber bullied i think that when we've got people being threatened with rape who might have been abused i think that when well, people the that are encouraging that, child abuse and things like that that we have to have a way of policing that both well, publicly you know. and socially as well as that because yeah. legally they're too big you know we need to have some kind of community responsibility and accountability without but you see community. they're the things those are the rules that you can say well that's the law mm. we're going to take that law and make yeah. that a rule but you know uh, you must know uh, uh, we've done a few shows and a lot of people know that pedophiles are legit Maps. yeah legitimately allowed on twitter are they've they only yeah, well, allowed yes on twitter? no they are see they, they really changed the laws they that. changed the rules for them really they've changed them again recently though because maps are just 
people who have an unhealthy interest and appetite Pedophiles. for the molestation of children. Yeah, but there's no... no yeah, I, I use one word. Do you know why? It you really no, fucking annoys me. No, you can't use paedophile. If you use paedophile, you, you're talking about people who don't molest children. You, you're talking about child molesters. I have to use one word for all of them, otherwise I call them nonces but, and then I get in trouble. But the child molesters means that they actively take part in the abuse of children. Well, maps say they don't, don't they? So, no well, maps. That, no, that's virtuous paedophiles. No, no maps. Non-offending, oh, so, minor attracted well, person. Well, that no, no maps is different then. Yeah, and then no there's maps, maps, minor attracted person. No, and so minor pro attractive person yeah. is different. So no maps would be what's known as a virtuous paedophile. Do you know? I do you know, I know them as mm. better liars. I I, I, I don't tolerate there are, it. it. Honestly, I I so there is a spectrum of paedophilia, mm. as in non-molesting paedophilia, yeah. which goes to like I am attracted to men or women, but I also find young people attractive right but i would never touch them because that is completely reprehensible right that's you, where it begins i get that yeah okay and they have a movement online map well, they pride. probably be involved in it but, but no even, but that's maps pride is wrong because that's that's people who are acknowledging that they think that love between children yeah but they call themselves no maps I, I i've spent a bit of time looking into that because i, I wish i had all the notes for me i mean that's appalling there's a prominent allowed, there's um, a prominent psychologist that helped get them on twitter who well, said it was safer think, well, I mean, james Cantor. i don't get i can't get my head around the the maps one i totally get because like they should be banned straight away because they're saying that they're trying to say that it's acceptable no 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 the, but the... they they contend that they don't that's pro c pro contact basically they're creating their own that's dangerous levels. it's very dangerous it's not look, look they've got I flags the first, I, yeah and again i think it's the pridey kind of one isn't it but here's the thing when i've told one you'd never be trusted we can't help it. I said, listen, I, yeah. would you ever let one of them babysit you? Even if they, you knew they wouldn't touch them, would you leave your child with someone you knew, an adult who found your child sexually attractive? Most people who you leave your baby or child with, you wouldn't be aware if they felt that way anyway. No, they wanted to be accepted. Right, but those ones who are more avert, as in I am a paedophile but I don't touch children, mm and i know that that's wrong to even think that i could be interested and have help for it they're a lot less likely to offend so we yes. know that when they're out in the open that way they are but it's the ones that mm. think it's acceptable oh, like yes. still in the 1970s when they had the movement of wanting to actually make it Hi. like for example putting yourself in the lgbt community how dare you oh yeah they like, want the pee in there lgbtq community are adults but here's the other part of it as well they they the, the workaround is because i bumped heads with a few of these on twitter and it doesn't always go well it never goes anywhere good um one told me uh abusing a child can never be tolerated ever under any circumstances okay so i did a bit of digging and read some of his old writings and i know why they say that because they don't think that sex between an adult and a child had necessarily constitutes abuse I mean, it just does. Of course, it is, it, is, it, is, it, it is, but they've convinced themselves that it doesn't have to be. And therefore, if you do it and it's consensual, which we know it can't be, that, but ever. they believe in their mind because they're mentally ill. They're, they're ill. Well, they have a predilection. Yeah, but some of these guys are ill. And we also know from reading scientific papers on them that they're, 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 they're incredibly manipulative. Mm. They're very good at manipulation. Yeah, and they're often very nice to mm. the kids. So the kids don't even see it in the way, and then that's how it's so confusing for children. That's how they, they, they manage it, that isn't it? That person loves them. I mean, I'm I'm very intolerant. I I must admit, my my liberalism firmly stops anywhere I near used to have that. A supervisor who used to say to me that they thought it was a shame that I wouldn't work with sex offenders because it was my one area that I wouldn't do, and I used to just say I'd be really bad because I'd just be like massively judgmental. Oh yes. I just know my limits, and I really have a lot of sense of awe of people who are able to find the compassion and empathy to help people in that well, way graham and i had it sorted didn't we graham we, we came up with a solution which as we're closing the show we can do this now because we're, we're, we're cracking on a little oh gosh we're late um not that i'm suggesting this should ever be done because that would get us banned on many social media i'm just saying that it, you know an idea is you know we touched on euthanasia before oh god no 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 it's okay they will go there willingly because what you do you set up a big factory and you have kids here it's a very good idea and then they go through the door and there's a round hole kids here and they put their head through their hole and that's where the guy with the ball gun is oh my god but no, no. 
because she gets better. This show is called Trigger Warning. I've not been nasty all night. We also solve some real third world hunger issues there. Oh my dear, oh my God. No fertilizing the crops. I'm not saying eat the pedophiles. Oh my God. I would never say eat the pedophiles, would I agree? You would I, never say I'm it sure out loud, I disagree no. with you. That is terrible. They make very good fertilizer. That is awful. Pigs fucking love eating people. It's awful. You they would be doing something good for society. You're like, you're like, listen, at the end of the day, like, I think that everybody should be allowed free speech. And what I really like about the UK is like, it should be a democracy and like, people should definitely not be controlled or made to feel like their life is controlled by any other thing. But let's just put the bolts through people's heads. No, no, just, I mean, just pedophiles. <laughs> just pedophiles. <laughs> Of which a large spectrum would never touch a child, even though I'm completely with you. I know, I get that, but you know, it, it, pigs need feeding. Oh my God, you're so bad. Mm. You're as bad as my mum. She used to want to have people have it put on the head in a branding. Do you know what? That's not a bad idea. And cut off the hands. Mm. They can't work then, can they? You <laughs> might as well send them for the bolt gun. My mum and you should just kind of hang out. I've not even started on the furries yet. I had to get some in. I've been so good for the whole yeah, show. Assassin, they want to see, like having sex dressed as fairy animals. People having a wank in a nylon dog suit. They're not no, good. I. That's more of an American thing. You know that in the UK, there's a lot of furries who are just like non-sexual and they're just like dressing up and hugging. I don't other. believe them. Honestly. Imagine the smell. No, I agree. No, they're, that. They're, they're trying to encourage kids furry hour. You know, where kids hang out with them. Like, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Do you know what though? I have to say, I, I interviewed a furry once on a program. And um, they came in and they were all sat there and I went and sat on the couch with them. And all I could remember was, you know, back in the day, after a good night at Angels or whatever, or clubbing, coming in and just like finding a really great big furry head, like just getting a big cuddle off one. See, my experience of people in costumes is not that great. No, I, but you I, know when you're coming in from a club. Yeah, but I went it. to see a, 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 the premiere of Hellbound, Hellraiser 2. Remember that? Down in London, we went to the premiere. Clyde Barker was there, Pete Atkins, the guy that wrote it. We all got made up because we were from the makeup college. No way. Fishing up, sticking out our faces. Um, but we had to stay in London that night. But we didn't have money. So we went to Victoria Station to the Which waiting room. Didn't have money, went and like, mugged a few people. Now, this isn't a sex story, but it, it, if, if it had gone that way, I'd have been really scarred for life. <laughs> I fell asleep on the floor at Victoria Station in the waiting room with a few of us. We were all together. And when I went to sleep, there was uh, some lady was down there with a boyfriend next. And when I woke up, it was a man in a fucking gorilla suit. I, I, I woke up with a start. Hello. No. no. So I don't never trust them. Was sex. that when you had all the things in your face as well? No, we took all that well, off. We took that would have been off. really fun. Yes. Yeah. So I don't trust people in suits. And he didn't touch me. But it's not the point. He could have, and I didn't like it's it. Like so. a completely innocent man, just like dressed up. But so he, he's you're just imagining yeah. he's going to abuse you. Well, I don't trust any you, man. You need to hang out with my youngest son. Who like, sleeps he's as dramatic as who he is. sleeps rough in a gorilla suit? Somebody who's been to some kind of premiere like you had. I think it's for the people that need to go to the bolt gun farm. Oh my god, <laughs> terrible. Emma, we, we got was 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 so we're an hour so over. So naughty. I, I've been good tonight. This is not that naughty, but I promise. <gasps> next time, yeah. I'll be worse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, Bobby. Uh, thank you so much. For it's a down. pleasure. I really it's appreciate been lovely it. chatting. I'm glad we finally got to do this. I'm sure I'm somewhere down <laughs> I'm the line. I'm not going to be recommending you to take over the prison service anytime soon. Why? <laughs> I, I, we'd have to kill the ones in prison. We've got Unbelievable. them. Well, no, we've got to test Purcell and shit, haven't we? Do you not think we put we put all this shit in the eyes of rabbits? Oh, I don't think anything should happen. But they can't tell you how it feels. No. They can only make a noise. Yeah. Pedophiles. No, I mean I don't. Think they could they write that. it like, down. I would have no animals tested. Hey, me either. Stop it, selfish humans. Pedophiles. Stop it. Well, we could put it in their eyes. Stop. I'm not killing them You're now. You're terrible. I'm not killing them You're now. Awful. I'm just putting bleach in their eyes. Listen, they'll be coming for you. What, the pedophiles? No, the police. At some point, they'll be like, hang on, well, wait a minute. What? Yeah, we found this building what? with 25 pedophiles yeah. with purcell in That's their eyes. Right. It will be Hayden Hewitt. <laughs> I think I'll be okay. It really hurts. <laughs> it won't me. But that's the thing they can tell you. They can fill in forms after their eyes get better. Awful. I'm just saying that they could be of use to society. Do you know what, honestly, although I do think we should save the rabbits. 
See? No. So you're coming around to my way of I, thinking. No, I'm not. I'm it's not. only a matter of time. You're a I'll, terrible man. I'll mention man. the monkeys next. You're a, ju you're, you're a just but terrible man. I, I'm just, I just think that if I start saying, imagine that the chimpanzees don't have to suffer anymore. With You only see those pictures. Well, I think the government's about to do that. Well, you know those pictures where, they, where they're taking the skull, the skull off and oh, they have the no, I can't bear that. But if it was a paedophile. You wouldn't feel Chimp so bad. Why would chimpanzee? Why did you do that? That's a because we're, we're, we're dreadful we people. However, it's that, Aren't we though? it's that logical thing, though, isn't it? It, it, it? If a million human lives were saved by killing a couple of dozen chimpanzees. Mm. Nah. Well, you won't let me use the paedophiles. <laughs> you can't have it both ways. Got to make a choice. Let the let the monkey live. You'll have to put a poll on your Twitter live. account. <laughs> it's terrible. You're terrible. <laughs> She's saying I'm not telling anyone about this part of the show. <laughs> and we have to go. Thank you so much. Yes, it's been an absolute yeah. pleasure. Uh, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, sorry about the break in the middle. YouTube was just not giving us the love, but I'm sure they will now that I've progressed my ideas for the utilisation of sex offenders. Oh. Um, we'll be back next week with Count Dankula as a guest. But remember, on Saturday, Smoke Steve hosts the International Pub on this channel where you can log in, get drunk and embarrass yourself horribly in front of everybody else. So do check that out. Saturday, there'll be links. Uh, to Emma's app and to a Twitter feed and everything else going in the description of the video. I'll be back next week with uh, everyone's favourite Scottish Nazi. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.